and not the body. The soul is the thing that is eternal, that will be eternal. Where does your consciousness go when you die? If it's, housing, if it's a product of electrons and neurons... Never mind all that. I just want you, theologically, where does your consciousness go? Your brain... That's accepted, okay. that's accepted. Yes, and your soul... Your consciousness. Your soul... But is it conscious? In the grave or at judgment? At all, the moment you die. It's conscious right now, that's a point. No, at all, when you die. for the Lord. Look at the psalms. I'm asking, when you die, yes. do you, does your consciousness continue? No, your soul continues. Okay, and is your soul conscious? It, it can yearn for the Lord, but it will not yearn for the pleasure of the flesh. If it yearns for the Lord, it's conscious, right? Without the fleshly nature that you're trying to work towards. Just trying to establish if there's consciousness. I've established it now. It can yearn for the Lord. Okay. And it will not lust right. after the flesh. So, do you do anything other than yearn? Do you have thoughts? But your soul... When you're, when your you're soul dead... Your cries out for Yahweh. Okay. Do you have any other... Do you have other thoughts apart from crying out yeah, to Yahweh? Yeah, to have them in. Well, if you're yearning, yeah, then there's that's consciousness. It, that's not an intellectual process, that's a desire. Well, it's animal. It's just animal. animal. Yeah, well, animals don't Because if, it's, if the body. intellect is not involved, how can it be anything other than animal? All right, I'd point of order, sir. I'd like some evidence about purgatory. Yeah, that's okay. Because I think you're being. That's abuse. okay. That's I really okay. Do. No, I'm just the try soul I'm and the mind that houses the, the thoughts of yeah. fleshly desires yeah. are separate. And at okay. the point of death, they are yeah. utterly separate. All right. Never to be returned. Okay, to the so. so yes. It's eternal. Do you mean from the beginning? We say it's immortal, so we, it, it, it began in a time, Never ended, but it goes on through. It's immortal. If it's eternal, then before you're born, you have your soul. And you hold on, hold on. Now, now this is another, another separate issue. So, so you you believe the soul is conscious to a certain extent. And I'm using the Bible. I'm just the one that took my head. I remember David. My soul cries out for this. Yeah. But you're not sure if there's a I don't general. Think it's got a mouth though to cry out with. You're not sure if there's a general consciousness of the, like you, for example, now. Right, you're thinking about various things. Yes, the Old Testament. That when you die, will you still be able to remember your family and think about your the time Bible on earth? says, in the grave there is no more remembrance of thee, the creator of the universe. I very much doubt that a lady in like uh, some part of London is going to be of more importance, even if I could conceive of these things without a brain. At judgment, when we get our glorified bodies, then that's a different matter, because there's no marriage in heaven, so there must be bodies to, to, right. to assure marriage with. Okay, so you get your glorified, so we'll move on then. Give me questions. I'm we'll we'll questions. move on to the glorified body. No, let's move on to purgatory and this fire. This is, this, yeah, yeah, this is important, this is part of the issue. Any evidence for the Bible? So when the, when, evidence. I see the word. When, when the um, glorified body, when the glorified body is given to you, sure. then you are reconstituted. I'm part of the, um, like the advice and guidance department of heaven. Like, I'm not very really sure of the like physicalities outside the Bible because I don't make it up and neither does it. It's all right. I'm only going with what you're saying. Sure. When the glorified body is given to you, yep. then that's you again, right? That's you. It's not without, something else. It's you. Without my sin nature, obviously. Right. So where did your sin nature go? It's a, it's a curse. It was never there to start with. It was added in the garden. This is where no worry about... Catholics believe so. It was I'm not talking about the cause. I will worry about the Bible. Not the cause of it. I'm talking about well, your, if it's your not, presence. If it's it went not, away no, no, when no, you no, died. No, if it's got an external cause, it can have an external like uh, end point, a term, a termination of it. And that is sure. in my flesh. I'm born in yeah. to sin. And yeah. David was conceived in yeah. sin. I'm born in to this sinful nature. Yeah. And when I die, I die out of it. It's like blood in, blood out. I'm in, and then I'm out. Okay. And I'll be relieved. So from you, me. the person, you the person now, yes. when you receive your glorified body, will be different from what you are now. It will not contain my sin nature. So you will have changed. Obviously, yes. the, the change is purgation. It's metanoia. No, it's not purgation. It's metanoia. It's literal metanoia. Tell me the difference. The difference is that... Per, uh, well, what change is change metanoia change? then? It's so a change people can, of heart. Right. A change. Of heart. Okay. A change of heart then. Not by suffering. By the grace of God. His grace is sufficient for me. Not and to worry. Blood, no, no, the I change is what matters. I will worry about any Christian who try to say that God's grace is not sufficient. Well, and we're, we're not. Remember my sins no more. What? Because I'm Stay just on purgatory for a minute. No, 
because the issue, yeah, because the, cha the change yeah. is what I'm focused you on. You've agreed there's a change, yes, the a change of a change of person, in, in change of your your character, your character, change of character. Change of heart. Well, your heart is this beating thing. Just so people aren't confused, that we're not talking about the change organ. Of mind, but we won't ever mind. As it were. This new okay. body will have a, an utterly different focus, and that will right. be to glorify God for eternity. So, in that poetic sense of heart change of heart you'll be different that change is an improvement is it not it's back to so our original you believe in purgatory then no i believe in eden because you said there's no, a change I tell you, what I believe. That's ridiculous. you said there's an improvement yes because of god's grace nothing i can do and we never said i never said the cause i said no that there is sir sorry no suffering that i can go through will one iota make a difference to my eternity no works no suffering never said it would you did you said that purgation is I what said. give me a change of heart purgation is the change process no purgation you are purged is what we're talking about. you are purged Excellent. that is you are improved by pain I never said how you do it, how it happens. That's all right. So we are. We're on that top of it. Here's, 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 here's the position. You've agreed there's an improvement. Here's the position. You're not answering my questions. You're being disingenuous. Not at and I all. think that you're not here to prove any case for purgatory at all. I think you're here to give Catholics a sense of, or at least there's a guilt. But you're not giving any evidence, sir. And the evidence I, I submit yeah. is, above all else, is the words of the Bible. Please give me any verse, however arbitrary, that implies that, that there is, there is uh, death and then the judgment. Give me the one that says it's appointed man wants to die, then a little nip down to some scourging, and then the judgment. Do you see what I'm saying? The judgment is where we get the glorified bodies. The, the once a man to die is once a man to die, and then is chronological. So I want to know, in between that part, where is purgatory house? What verses do you have for it? Where did the Pope come up with Purgatory's this? Purgatory's not in the Bible. I know. From I know that. You know that. He knows that at this point. Now, from what you said, Can I vote for you? from what you said, there's a change of person, a change of heart. Therefore, therefore, there's a purgation because that purgation is your although that sin nature is removed. So you believe in purgation, right? Now I'd love the biblical evidence. Now then, now then, given that you agree there's a purgation, that purgation happens. As we teach between the last moments on earth you also teach a lot and the entrance into heaven. She is right what she's saying there. She is only asking. asking. So, He's not going to give me the Bible. He'd have done it ages ago. Oh, 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 so, what you're asking for is a scripture. It's, that, it's that, the Catholic Evidence Guild. Yeah. I'd just like some evidence. You just want a, a scripture like to clear it up. Just purgatory. I've got yeah. hundreds yeah. So you're not asking for a lot then. You're not asking for a lot. So, you've agreed that the last moment of your life You've got a sinful nature, but when you receive your resurrection body and you go to heaven, you won't have that anymore. So you've been purged. So you've had purgatory. The process. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The process is purgatory. Who no, says? Who says it's a place? No, I've already counted that. The Who says it's a place? The grace of God. The process is the great. The grace of God affects it. Not a place. The grace of God is not a process. The Catholic, no, no, no. The Catholic doctrine is that it's, a, it's an event. Yeah, there's a fire, there's pain, there's this, there's that. That's not a place. That's it's not biblical. There's no teaching that it is necessarily a place. If the fire is the Holy Spirit, which I could accept actually. The grace of God, I, I've got to point you back to it because I think you might need it at this point. The grace of the Almighty is the only thing you need. The blood of Christ. You, you're actually you're misusing the term. The Here's the term. You said, right. I said that purgation, you, you, you accepted that there's purgation. No, no, because no, you no, said no, no. the blood of Christ washes me free of you, You're misunderstanding the point here. You, you said there's a transformation. Yes. That's purgation because no, the sin nature... The, the, the word you use doesn't matter. It There's really a transformation. Matters. Transformation from your sin nature. You said transformation from your sin nature out of your very mouth, from your sin nature to a nature without sin. That is purgation. No, the word purgation does not mean metanoia. No, it doesn't. Because otherwise, the Bible, it means it's a It means turning around. It means it's none of this in there. Like. That, mean, that word is not the key thing. You, listen, you've no, effectively sorry. supported sir, you're, purgatory. No, I have Because you've agreed there's an improvement. It's a different meaning. That's just like yeah, agreed with purgatory, unknowingly. Purgatory your is the process. Lord, 
definition of the process of change, which is instantaneous. What's flawed? The grace of the flaw, defective, what, What's flawed in it? Yeah. I said it's I a transformation what, from I'm your sin you nature yeah. to the perfect asked. nature. I'm so happy you asked. That's are. purgation, I'm that's a process. You now you said, um, you said it's the blood of Jesus. You said it's the blood of Jesus. Have you asked me a question? But the blood of Jesus is not, the blood of Jesus is not the process, it's the engine. Okay. So purgation is the process of purification, which you accept it happens. I believe it's only by the grace of God. That's why you're misunderstanding the point. The fact that the means is by the grace of God and the blood of Christ. You're misunderstanding the point. No, no, you're being obtuse. I tell you why. You're not being precise enough. You must be precise. Best to be like specific. Good. I, so, do you so I here's the point. You said it's by the blood of Christ. You said it's by the blood of Christ. It is by the blood of Christ. Would you like to accept that as a doctrine? If you agree that there is a, a change, and you said that's by the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ is, as it were, the engine room of the change. But the change is a real event. The change is a real process. You said yourself there's a change. Does it matter to you? You said there's a change. I'm going with what you said. No, I'm asking you a different question. Is it yes or no? Does it matter to you? If you so go clearly up. against then what the Bible teaches, the run, well, yes or no, or maybe. Firstly, firstly, firstly it is impossible for the Catholic faith to go against the Bible. However, However, well that's why the question isn't really of value, we're on purgatory. We're on purgatory. An actual Christian is speaking to a Christian. Whether you accept me as a Christian is irrelevant to me because I'm totally speaking to me. Jesus Christ is the only mediator. And the grace of the Holy God and the blood of Christ on the cross is utterly sufficient. The Bible says His grace is sufficient to do the change. Yes, but what you're missing is the thing you said yourself. Yeah. Let me explain. Hallelujah. Let me explain what you're actually missing. Go on, then. You said it's sufficient, but there's still a process of transformation. No, I said you said it's sufficient, no but you nonetheless God, said. Process. The process has been finished See? on the cross. So why do you say that from the moment you die yeah. till when you get your resurrection body, there's a transformation there from no the hope. sinful nature no, no, to no, the sinless no, that's nature? Incorrect. I never said that. I said that at the at the at the point that you're glorified, there's no process of change because you are dead. You're dead now in your sins. And if you don't accept the blood of Christ, what do you mean? No you said the we weren't talking about that. We're I talking about nothing in the grave. You said nothing. that we have attitudes, no, no, attitudes, no, um, no, sinful no, nature. No, you said you have a sinful nature, no, and that that's no, gone. I said, at the point of the grave, you will remember nothing. At the point of glorification, this is a new event now, a resurrection, if you will. There's nothing, no process in between, because there is no brain or no fleshly well, desire. Hold on a minute. You, you can take your lust you to said the grave and you can crack on right. with it, mate. Good luck. So you die yeah. with your lustful nature. And it's finished. Yeah. Okay. So it's finished, so God removes it. No, the body rots away. Well, you get a resurrection body at yeah, judgment. And it's absent from that. So that resurrection body, which is your body, right? Reconstituted. Yeah. So there's been a transformation no, from your hasn't. sinful body no. to your resurrection no body. Process. Otherwise, it's a totally separate body. No process. Don't you oh, an event then. No event. There's an event. To go no from, process. To go from A... English. To go from A, sinful nature, to B, sinless what, nature, this, this is a process. Out. This cigarette went out, right? And I'm going to light it again. And it's the exact same cigarette, There's a, but during the right. time it's uh, out to the time it's a light, it remembers no more. It has no feelings. There's no process so there's, going on. Whoa, whoa, you've, you've done it. There's a process from being unlit to being lit. Exactly, an instantaneous event. Okay, so you agree then there's an event, a process. No. You've just given the analogy of the cigarettes. You're equivocating between a process which is an ongoing state of affairs that moves towards a conclusion and an instantaneous. All right, let's give it instantaneous event. The that cigarette is lit. It's in the Bible. The cigarette, the cigarette is lit instantaneously. Yeah. The transformation from and sinful the nature. Is sufficient. The transformation sufficient. by your own analogy, the transformation from sinless nature. Why are we not in the Bible? To Why does it matter what cave it? 
from sinful nature to sinless nature is an instantaneous event. Oh, like the cigarette. It Wait a minute, you just said that when you personally die, there's a, there's, and then, there's, and then you go to when you are on Judgment Day with your new resurrection body. That's not on the cross 2,000 years ago. That's, that's an event in you. Christ said it is finished. The work is done. I never denied that. We're not on that. Well, you've denied a load of other stuff. Staying with purgatory again. I don't want to. You've agreed, you've agreed that your cigarette is analogous. Listen, what, this is not I'm going this with what you say. I know, but your method of you've agreed and you've agreed, you're not going to lead me into heresy. You're it doesn't matter. You don't have to go anywhere you don't want. I'm just going with what you've agreed, which oh, is that... No, but you're, you're skewing what I'm saying. I'm only I taking with what you said. That you I do can not only any process from death and I've, to the glory by And I've put process to one side yes. and just taken it as an event. Now, the event, the event, by the grace of God, yeah. which transforms you yeah. from a person with a sinful nature to a person with a resurrection body that's sinless, that event is purgation. No, because because it, no. you are purged of the sinful nature and thus you have the sinless nature. Alright, I'm going to try it one more time now. Well, I'm going with the what you say, that's God all. Has nothing to do with me. Only I never said it did. I am reached I said it's by Christ, as you said. But it happens in you. No, the process is. The event is in you. The, the event in me is now. While I've still got the sin and the flesh, now the work is done in me, and he will finish the work that he has started in me. You go to show. You go to show. Christian. You say, all right, you say, Jesus all right. Went there and told them the kingdom is coming. I thought you said you were going there. Never mind. No, let me see. The fact is, you're dead, dying in your no, sinful no, nature. No, 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 the event happens. The event goes between point A, you with your sinful nature, and point B, you with your resurrection body. That event is by the blood of Christ. Yes. It is where you are, not, not you are any, perfected. Purgatory as a place of I'm just fire saying. And pain. Did it hurt you when you became an Christian? event happens? Did it hurt? An event happens. Did it hurt you? You're made perfect did through this you? event. No. When you became a Christian, did it hurt? Did you feel like you were being scared? 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 You know, it's the answer to all of this. Oh, yeah, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. They have, first. No, they have prayers for the dead. There's another issue there. But all these ideas, concepts, right. they're all from Jesus. So what we have is an admission here that we die with this sinful body and we then have a sinless body. So it's been a, a transformation, which is just the word that you use isn't so important. It's what it signifies that matters. We say purgatory, purgation. The lady here doesn't like the word purgation no, or I purgatory. Don't like, I don't like the Catholic We doctrine. don't mind, we don't mind the words as long as the substance is there. The substance is purgation. The substance is purgation. Now, Protestants, they say, oh, there's no place called purgatory where this purgation can happen and and they say so it's unbiblical well we're not saying that there's purgatory we're saying that there's purgation and that was admitted by this lady here so if she admitted it but doesn't like the idea that there's a place we don't mind admitting there's no place there may be a place there may not be a place alright now the first verse against you, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, he's Man United, you're Liverpool. I don't nah. want to play football. Where are you playing? No one's Arsenal. Yeah, but we're playing Italy. These yeah. are the Romans. Now then, <laughs> now then, we take the other Bible first because the oh, late. I'm the Bible first. He had one. Did you have one? You weren't here. You, you missed them. You missed them. Oh, praise God. Now then, we have in Second Maccabees chapter twelve. Verse 46, where? Judas Maccabeus. Judas Maccabeus, the great liberator of the Jews from the Greek forces of Antiochus IV, Epiphanes. We have had a battle and many Jews have fallen in battle. And it turns out that these are discovered to have amulets of the gods of Jamnia on them. And so we find that Judas decides we are going to pray for these people, these dead people. 
and the people, the Jewish soldiers, then offer prayers for the dead. Now, how is it possible that if, when you die, you go just to heaven or just to hell, then there could be prayers for you? Because if you're in hell, no prayers can be of any value for you. If you're in heaven, no prayers can be of any value for you because you don't need them. So chapter 12, verse 46 of the second book of Maccabees shows us that there must be an intermediate state for people who die. Otherwise, there could be no prayers for the dead. Now, we know that this is not just an isolated teaching because Jews are well known to say prayers for the dead. It's the famous prayer called the Kaddish. Jews pray, have been praying since before the Middle Ages. We know that the Kaddish origin lies before the first century BC. So Jews are not just looking at 2nd Maccabees 1246 as an isolated thing, it's part of their religion. And thus we can know that Jews in the time of Jesus believe that you pray for the dead. Now we go further. We have, and I can't remember the verse, St. Paul speaks of Onesiphorus, who has died and talks about him having, um, hoping that he will find salvation. I don't think I've highlighted that verse, so I can't locate it right now. But, oh, you've got it. What's this? Okay, okay. Can you, uh, do you know the one where I'm thinking about uh, where St. Paul talks about, um, I think it's Anesiphorus who's died. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll find it afterwards. So we have prayers for the dead in Jewish, in Judaism. And that means that there's a basis for saying there's not just heaven and hell. Now then, what we must do is ask, when I've quoted second book of Maccabees, why Protestants set, don't, do not allow it as scripture? Because clearly, they need to justify their position if they're going to say it isn't valid scripture. I haven't got a Protestant with me yet who's prepared to take this challenge. But if we do, we can go into it. The, the basic Christian position is this, that, that the Septuagint was what was quoted from by the evangelists when they quoted the Old Testament. The Septuagint contains the two books of Maccabees. So, and if, if that's the case, and in any event, we know the second book of Maccabees, the first book of Maccabees, were treated as scripture by the early fathers. There is no reason why Christians today should disdain those books. In fact, the Protestants regarded them as extremely valuable extremely worthwhile they were put in the King James Bible and it was only in the early 19th century under pressure from like the likes of the Edinburgh Bible Society they were removed but that wasn't for, that was just for Protestant doctrinal reasons the testimony of the fathers is that these are valid books 